muskrat. Sink, sink. All the yep. way through. That's what made it sink. That's right here. <coughs> Actually, both boots. One is almost completely gone. The other one's got a couple of nice size holes in it. And it either, between it taking on water there and all the rain, it no village, over, huh? Yeah, it over, overtook your village or your village just wasn't working. But I guarantee you that's what made this thing sink. What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba and Marine and we're down here on Lake Norman which is two lakes down uh, from our personal lake, Lake Hickory and we've got an inspection that I have to do on a houseboat that sunk and if you come right over here with me you'll see it. Um, it's probably in about 15 foot of water at the stern but if you look down at the bottom of the hill here you'll see it down there and we're not sure what actually made this boat sink but we're going to jump in, we're going to do an inspection of it, see if we can find any maybe holes in the hull or anything like that, maybe see if we can just figure out if the plugs were not in it or whatnot. and we're also going to try to get a price to the guy of what it's going to take to lift it up. But we got a little walk, we've got to go all the way down through these trails here and then figure out a way to get off this embankment into the water itself to do the inspection. So it's going to be a busy day for us, but hopefully it'll be a successful day. So we're going to gear up and we're going to get started. So here we are, we are actually walking down the trail. I'm talking to the owner of the boat here, you can see him on the screen. And we're trying to formulate a game plan of what we're going to actually be doing. And anytime we do any type of work like this, I try my best to... Uh, explain our actions in detail so I say hey you know first of all it's all about safety we're gonna get out here we're just gonna do an inspection or this is how we're gonna rig uh, especially if we're lifting a vessel a lot of times things can get damaged and the owner needs to understand that too now we do take all precautions necessary to try our best not to damage stuff but sometimes uh, things still happen so we're actually walking through the trail here wasn't that far of a walk probably about 150 200 feet um, Thankfully, we're not going very deep, so we was able to wear very thin suits here because it is hot this time of the year. Uh, but we're trying to determine if we want to crawl down this embankment here. There's actually another clearing that we're going to go over and check out as well, so that's what we're going to do there. But, uh, yeah, we're just trying to decide how we're going to get in the water, and then once we're in the water, how do we get back out of it as well. So we're going to go check this other clearing out real quick. Um, and as you can see, there's not much to actually climb up or down. So I think our best bet is actually to go into this other uh, little access point. And the owner had been using this as an entry and exit way anyways. He had pulled his boat over to this general area to work on it, to be able to service it and things like that. And he's got him a little uh, makeshift ramp there to get, or a plank, if you will, to get out on the boat. So we're actually gonna be utilizing this. Got a little step down, about three or four foot here. Uh, we're going to step down into the water, uh, get geared up completely. We've got our gear on, but we're going to get our mask on, our fins on, uh, just finalize our plan. And then we're just going to make a loop around the boat. We're actually going to make a couple of different loops. And what our goal is at this point is, one, find out the condition of the vessel. You know, is it broke apart? Uh, is it actually sitting on the bottom or is just, say, the stern in this case sitting on the bottom and the rest of it semi-floating or whatnot? And we're also looking for attachment points. If we were able to lift this vessel, where are we going to attach bags to it or a crane system or whatever lifting device that we're going to be using? Um, and also just to see if we can determine what actually made this vessel sink. A lot of times um, we may be able to lift the boat up, but if we don't know what made it sink, Sometimes we can't get them out of the water and we're going to have to leave bags up underneath them for a lengthy period of time and that can get very, very costly for the uh, owner of the vessel uh, because obviously we can't just leave our bags there indefinitely. They're going to have to have a trailer ready. They're going to have to have whatever they can um, have so that they can remove this vessel from the water. A lot of times when people hire us, all they're hiring us to do is to inspect it, 
and to lift it and maybe even pump it out. It's their responsibility to get it out of the water. And of course, we may have a particular rate that we charge for the salvage to lift part of it. But as far as us leaving our bags under it indefinitely until they can get a trailer or something, then I can get pretty costly pretty quick because that's by the hour, if you will. So you can imagine how quickly um, a salvage fee like that can add up really quickly. But here we're on the stern of the vessel and we're just swimming. We're actually on the port side, so we're the port aft side. Um, and we're just swimming around, just doing an, uh, getting a general impression of what the vessel looks like. Trying to determine here, I'm actually going underneath it as well. We're, we're actually seeing if the vessel is sitting on the bottom because that's very important to us because we may not be able to get bags up underneath it. Uh, the strap system that we use, basically it goes up underneath the vessel and then we're going to hook the bags to that strap system up underneath. We also got to be able to hook airlines and everything else to it. So we're just getting a general impression here of what it looks like. Um, as you can tell, the vessel is obviously sitting on the bottom. So that's, that's going to hinder us um, somewhat during the salvage phase of it. We're also just noticing any debris that's in the way, um, noticing the attachment point of that rope there. So where the rope was attached, that may be an attachment point. There's metal railing that goes all the way around this vessel. And I try not, or I try my best not to use railing to lift with because a lot of time it can just break free. And we don't want that. That can be dangerous for us. Uh, it could just damage the vessel, things like that. So we're, once again, there's a cleat there that we could possibly use. But once again, I really don't like using cleats, primarily just because cleats break away very easily, especially if it's in fiberglass. Uh, lift bags can pick up on those cleats. It can shear those bolts or it can pull the bolts through the fiberglass. Um, on this particular vessel, there's slots in the side of the gunnels that's solid metal, obviously. And that's going to be a, a good option for us uh, to run straps and stuff. Although the boat is on the bottom, it's going to be hard for us to get up underneath it. So what we may have to do is lift, lift it via those slots just enough to get straps and bags under it and then lay it, lay it back down and then pump up the bags from there. But we're on the bow of the vessel now. We're swimming around to the front. Um, and we're just, like I said, it's just a general impression is what we're making of this, trying to determine uh, what made it sink, how are we going to lift it, um, and if we even can lift it as well. A lot of times when people call us and say, hey, my boat sunk, can you get it out of the water? We don't always like to say, yes, we can, because it depends. A vessel like this may be outside of our lifting capacity. Lifting capacity simply means how much physical lift we may have, how many lift bags we may have to do the job. So a lot of times we're sitting there doing calculations in our head underwater. Is this vessel going to be uh, able to be lifted with uh, the amount of lift that we have? And here we're kind of just discussing things under the water and we're going to move on over to the starboard side of the vessel now. And we're starting to see quite a bit of damage. Uh, if you look right there, you'll see where the cabin of the houseboat has just com come completely disconnected from from the hole itself. And there you can see I can just reach my hand all the way through it. And that, that's actually the base of the cabin. So if you were walking around the deck of the houseboat, that would be the cabin or the part of the house itself where it's come. So there's quite a bit of damage to this boat um, already. Uh, we did notice just some small openings there. Right there was a big old gash in the side of the hole. And this is a steel hole too. So you know, usually when you find stuff like that, there's typically a reason that vessels sink, and obviously this, this is pretty much the reason here. But we're going to work our way on around, and what that little knob was you just saw right there that I'm holding my hand on, that's a vent. So in the event that we do lift this vessel up, we've got to make sure that the water line is below that vent, because if it's not, as we're just pumping water out, water is just going right back in. That little hole there was actually a scupper hole there in the back. Uh, once again, we want to make sure it's up out of the water. Um, here we're checking the transom. Now this is an inboard outboard houseboat, so that means the motor and the engines on the inside, the foot of the motor is on the outside. That means through the transom there's boots that go around it. And a lot of times what will happen is muskrats will eat those boots out and it'll take on water and flood as well. This one also has a steering system that comes out through the transom as well. So we're going to be checking it and checking the boots around it. 
And here you can see where the steering system's coming out. You can see that the boot has just been shredded by muskrats. Basically, they just get in there and they eat it out. And we are pretty certain at this point that is what made this vessel sink. In short, muskrats ate that boot out. Water come rushing in. Now, he did have a bilge pump that was working and pumping the water out, but if you get too much water in there, it's going to burn that pump up or it's going to run your battery down and then your pump's going to stop anyways and you're not going to be able to pump any water out. So we feel pretty confident that right there is what made this boat sink. Muskrat. I'll look yep. through that's what made it sink. That's right here. <coughs> Actually, both boots. One is almost completely gone. The other one's got a couple of nice size holes in it. And it either, between it taking on water there and all the rain, it no billage, over, huh? yeah, it over, overtook your billage or your billage just wasn't working. But I guarantee you that's what made this thing sink. Because the last thing we saw. I didn't realize the. Uh, stern was at the rear. I thought this yeah. was the front of the front. All right guys, so we just got finished up, just got out of the water. We were able to determine what made this vessel sink. In short, muskrats ate the boot out around the um, outboard part of the engine and it filled up with water. It filled up with so much water that it ended up either one, burning the bilge pump out or it shorted out the battery. And of course the bilge just shut down and it quit, quit pumping out. But that's what made that vessel actually sink. Now, unfortunately, we don't have enough lift. Uh, our company doesn't to actually get this vessel up. It's a steel hull bottom and it's just way too much um, lift for what we got the capacity for. Although we've got other salvage crews we can partner with, we can definitely get it up. I'm not sure the owner is going to make the best value of it because I don't think the boat's worth what it's gonna cost to actually get it up. Either way, he's gotta figure out something, so we're in limbo on what to do right now. So we're gonna leave it in his in his ballpark and see what he wants to go with. But I appreciate you coming on this dive with us. If you got any questions, please drop it down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Guys, if you like this video and you wanna see more salvage related videos, hit that thumbs up button and definitely share it as well. As always guys, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always guys, we appreciate your business.